Welcome to episode 49 of Engaging Franciscan Wisdom. My name is Sister Michelle Lallier, and I'm your host today. I'm delighted to introduce our guest, Jamie Deering, for a conversation about culture and Franciscan spirituality. Welcome, Jamie. Hello, welcome. (laughs) Thanks for having me. Oh, it's very good to have you here. And it's a blessing to have you on the podcast during this year anniversary of your moving to Minnesota, where we're happily two of four women who are sharing an intentional community here at Welcoming House. Isn't that grand? It is so (laughs) exciting. (laughs) All righty. Well, Jamie, you've been a long time contemplative leader, building bridges between our thoughts and our experiences of God. Your life has been one of journeying with God in ways that break down barriers within and without, and at the same time, expand possibilities to giving and receiving love. Now that's delicious, isn't it? (laughs) That's good. I've witnessed how passionate you are about how our thoughts impact our reality and responses in the world, and how we can expand our capacity to reframe our thoughts and assumptions, and therefore, Listen into the great and cosmic silence from which our thoughts arise. I'm excited that today we can lean in to listen to the fruit of this past year, where through prayer and study of the Franciscan charism, you've come to understand more fully the communion and integration between your deeply held contemplative roots and Franciscan spirituality. Living into the question of what is yours to do in service to God, God being manifest through you into the world. So thank you for being here today. Yeah, thanks again for having me. Yeah, good. Well, Jamie, as we're already getting a sense of, you have a fascinating journey of God walking with you and you're walking with God in unexpected places and relationships. There are several dimensions that come together in your spiritual and relational life, and among them, I'm wondering, could you speak to how music and the arts or creative endeavors have strengthened and enriched your life? Mm. One of the first and primary ways that God grabbed a hold of me and that I knew the presence of God in me and in the world was through music. So when I was four years old, I began piano lessons. And then uh, when I was in elementary school, there was a choir. And I was so excited to be part of this, creating music with our bodies and with our souls, which just felt to me like a special portal, a special pathway to God. And you, you had to take clarinet or actually, what was the recorders. You had to go through recorders in fourth grade. And so I just couldn't wait for fourth grade to be complete and do my recorder thing so that I could be in the choir the next year. And, um, for a very short period of time when I was at eight, um, I was going to Sunday school and we would come home with the piece of music that we'd learned on the back of the sheet. So it was a little Bible study sheet and it would tell the Bible story on one page and mm-hmm. the back page, it would have the song. And I kept one of those sheets that had just a closer walk with me mm-hmm. on the back for many, well, really till I came here. Mm-hmm. Um, and that song grabbed a hold, just a closer walk with me. Granted, me please, I just want to walk with you and I want to know you. And it's been the, the, the thread of music through my entire life is what has anchored me in knowing and experiencing God's presence. A rich thread that runs through your life. And I witnessed that in listening to you sing, in the chorale that you're in now, in the vitality you bring to our morning and evening prayer. It's, it's very evident that it nurtures your soul and gives praise to God at the same time. Yes. It's one of the ways that I experience God's presence coming up through me and then into the world. And and the reverse is is true. Yeah. I have been known to burst into song <laughs> in 
many given moments. <laughs> I've noticed you have a song for about everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. I really do. Easy. <laughs> and oh, so many Bible passages memorized through music. Uh huh. So, so oftentimes when we're reading scripture mm -hmm. in prayer or I'm anywhere reading scripture, the song that I've learned for that scripture is going through my head. And I, I think maybe sometimes I do everyone a favor by not bursting into that. <laughs> But you're experiencing it in rhythm and rhyme, and uh, that's a, a lovely way to remember. You also have the rhythm and rhyme of many other creative interests and, and uh, attractions that, that have been with you through the cycle of a year now mm -hmm. um, that nourish your soul. What are some of those? Well, I've discovered that I can paint. That's been a recent discovery. I started with paint by numbers. And then uh, Jaber recently, like within the last couple of weeks, discovered that I could now see things. I've been painting these um, wood circles that will become ornaments. I've been freehand painting them. Uh, but before that, uh, my mom taught me how to knit. So I've been a knitter and a crocheter. That's kind of a winter um, mm -hmm. creative endeavor for me. Um, beading. I love to create jewelry and things like that. Hmm. Uh, kind of the backstory to this from my experience of you is you love to create beauty. Mm, and yeah. so music and the arts are ways of contributing beauty and being immersed in beauty. Mm -hmm. And as we've you know, been studying and learning, one of the names for God that St. Francis names in the praises of God is you are beauty. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, that's a deep and long tradition in the broader world as well, but it's certainly true in the Franciscan tradition. So thank you for bringing beauty into our home. Yes, that does remind me that I love to bring beauty into the physical space. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed making tablecloths when I first arrived here for different seasons and placemats. And, and it's about color mm -hmm. and uh, the expression of beauty. Yeah. 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 And plants mm -hmm. is another creative thing that I enjoy and maybe have a little habit of having a little starch of plants everywhere. <laughs> and a lot of beauty in the yard, some of which yes. has migrated inside with snow and ice these days. That's, that's <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Very true. Oh, uh, very good. Well, thank you for those really beautiful reflections. And um, to expand on these various dimensions that are part of your life, you've also lived in a variety of places and have been a part of several congregations and cultural contexts. What have been some life lessons or stories that you carry forward as you brought your gifts to and received gifts from these communities? Mm -hmm. You know, I was thinking the other day uh, about how many countries that I have visited or lived in. Mm. And um, I think I stopped counting at 15 or 16. And something that was so uh, important for me as my kids were growing up was to be sure that they had this experience of the diversity of humankind and the diversity of thought and movement and ideas. And so it's, it's been very meaningful for me to have been blessed to have traveled. I traveled with students that were 10, 11, and 12 years old on three different trips overseas. That was when you were a teacher? Yes, when ah, I was a teacher. God bless you. <laughs> yes. And so Australia and England and Scotland and Wales. Um, yeah, so that was such a blessing. And the gift was being exposed to different ways of thinking, uh, different ways of being in the world. And I served in the Peace Corps, as you know. And so I lived in Macedonia for a little under two years. And that, plus my experiences in a variety of, of churches mm -hmm. uh, throughout my um, formative spiritual formation years mm -hmm. was understanding the power of a community mm -hmm. to form, to be so influential in how our worldview, I'll stick with me, how my worldview was formed. Yeah. And to be mindful of 
those influences. Mm -hmm. And as I've aged, I'm more mindful of when I'm in the discerning process Mm -hmm. that those influences can either support my spiritual formation and the expansion of my spiritual being Mm -hmm. that way, um, or they can uh, become barriers Mm -hmm. and not judging without a sense of judgment, a sense of being with that, mm-hmm. the strong influence that a community can have. And the other thing I'll say is that recently a friend of mine distinguished for me this word interdependence. Mm-hmm. And we've been having these conversations, how uh, we come from different cultures. And so I've been so curious about, again, the formation of this person coming growing up in a different culture Mm -hmm. and growing up in American culture and sort of a spirit of independence. This culture was a a spirit of interdependence. So I've been learning more about what that is and connecting that to all the experiences that I've had have been helpful in pointing me to what it means to be interdependent and, and communal. In thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is a different mindset of including, as you say, mindful of others as we go about our discerning or deciding or acting in the world, that we're not an independent insular agent, but actually have impact and and are impacted by others. And how to do that as an adult in healthy relationships is a life learning process, isn't mm-hmm. it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It really is. Yeah. Yes. And it can, we can tie that into our thinking and how important it is to be aware of our own thinking, our own judging, our own assumptions. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of God's been working with me on on assumptions lately and helping me notice, I don't know, boy, I really do come from assumptions more often than I was aware of before. And the importance of being aware of that, that our impact is real Mm -hmm. on on another person. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, And to continue that direction of exploring awarenesses, I have seen you, I've witnessed you integrate and express uh, in new ways your rootedness in the contemplative tradition of prayer in what you call somatic presence and in spiritual direction. Could you tell us about these and or other elements and how they're fitting together at this time for you? So it's such a beautiful weaving (laughs) since my early 20s, really, of, of these three ways of being that come with practices that help open me to God's presence to um, to receiving and giving love, to noticing whatever stuff I'm putting in the way of that, whatever barriers I'm putting up way in that. My first uh, dip in the pond of contemplation was a centering prayer group. Hmm. Of, uh, I was about 24, 25 at the time. And they were uh, women that were maybe in their 40s and 50s and had been together for a while and they invited me to come join them and I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea what was waiting for me. And I came in and there was brief greetings and we all sat down and the leader said, let us begin and closed her eyes for 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. And that has sent me on a journey of decades now of understanding the busyness. We call it the monkey mind, um, mm-hmm. busyness of, of my mind and cultivating the ability to be with my thoughts, not to get rid of them, but to actually be with them and let them go, let them go. I'm not actively saying go away Mm -hmm. in the process of being with them. They naturally go on their way. There's some things in contemplation we can do to help that, but it's actually about setting down striving. Mm -hmm. And so this concept of being with, being with our thoughts, then it gets integrated in somatic presence with being in 
our bodies, being in my body. What is my body experiencing right now? Because our bodies live in present time. Mm -hmm. And so to the degree that I can be in my body, I can be present in present time. So there's that sense of being with, then the sense of in spiritual direction, being with another, companioning another. That again, it's so important for me to be able to know what it is that's going on in me, yeah. physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, mm -hmm. so that I can hold space, so I can offer that space to another person for them to be with whatever is going on in them. So there's this beautiful weaving of growth in one area and challenge in another. Mm -hmm. um, growth in a contemplative practice and then being in a car accident and needing to learn some some ways of being coming back into my body mm -hmm. um, through a somatic presence and experiencing uh, being guided in spiritual direction to guiding others mm -hmm. really companioning others in spiritual direction so beautiful weaving is how I would say that one more time. Yeah. Okay. And one that continues today, it's not like a life lesson learned. It's a way of being in the world that deepens okay. and opens and strengthens and, mm -hmm. yeah. And keeps opening and opening some more and opening some more. And again, in different, different rhythms, there's not a period, you know, before I uh, left for the Peace Corps, I completed... Um, my spiritual direction program. And the month before that, I completed a yoga training. Both were two-year programs. And I, I knew that I needed both to ground me for the experience that I was about to go into in the Peace Corps. And the Peace Corps showed up when I was in these programs already. I had about a year left of these programs. Um, but I, I'm so aware of, oh, I need this. I need this these skills, these practices that I can take with me and practices that I practice today. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine not having practices that ground me so that God can continue to open up in me what God would open up in me yeah. for service in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And I certainly see that um, in how you greet each day. That's your your way of being in the world. So thank you for the consistency mm -hmm. of that witness. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. So um, maybe we could take a moment and uh, rewind to how in the heck you came to central Minnesota, where currently we're with <laughs> ice and snow blessing the Lord. So prior to when we met, you'd been searching for an intentional spiritual community and we're ready to relocate, which of course I did not know because I did not know you. So through a mutual friend, Elise, you got connected mm -hmm. with us here at Franciscan Welcoming House, entered a time of discernment with us and in your own journey. And a year ago, as I noted earlier, you moved here. So what drew you to leave your home in Washington State and come here to St. Cloud? And once here, what have you found? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll try to briefly tell the story. And it really begins with a dear friend, Nathan. So Nathan, thank you. Because Nathan would send me texts. I was living in a small town in Washington State called Packwood. And Nathan would send me these texts that said, Homer, Homer, Homer. That was the extent of the text. And he was sending me these texts because I had begun this discernment process, discernment journey. I had set down a position that was not feeding my spirit or feeding me physically, mentally, emotionally, it was, it was not good for my well-being. And so I said, said no to that, set that down and began a seven, what ended up being a seven month process of saying yes to coming to St. Cloud, yes to physical, emotional, spiritual well-being in ways that I could not have imagined, ever could have imagined in coming here, the sense of community and family and stability and a place from which I can be messy. And Trying the rest be of us be messy. Right, <laughs> right. Be, be, be really messy and and imperfectly be loved in that messiness. 
Um, I said yes to a, a new job, which I'll talk about in a second, and um, just new experiences and new possibilities. So Nathan sent me to Alaska, and Elise, who I met a couple of times on Zoom, mm -hmm. said, come and be with my family for a week. And so I did. And in that process, discerned that Alaska would not be where I would um, end up, primarily because I would most likely never see my children again because it was so remote. And she gave you my name and me your name, and then we met. And I can remember a beautiful summer day in July of 21, uh, receiving a phone call from you. And after an hour of my scribbling in my notebook at the time, what you were saying, having no idea that what you were saying was, was literally, in some cases, word for word, what I had been journaling about and what God had been giving me in terms of where I was being guided. Mm. I didn't have a very clear, like, crystal clear sense that it was intentional community. I had that growing sense. And after speaking with you, it was, oh, oh, this is, this is intentional community and not intentional community like 55 and older is an intentional community, mm -hmm. but intentional spiritual community that I was to be returning to home, to roots. Mm -hmm. And uh, not that I had left them completely, um, but that there were aspects of my spiritual rootedness that weren't showing up in my life at that time. And that th what I was saying yes to were those showing up mm -hmm. into my, into my future, which is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A year later, and it's it was rich and beautiful, and I can remember in October driving from Washington State across toward Minnesota, and every morning setting out and driving into the sunrise yeah. in this mystical fall experience. Colors talk about beauty, having no idea of the beauty interior beauty that was to come and being here. Wow. So, um, there's a lot there, right. That is, um, inside the choice to leave a little town in Washington state, trek up to, you know, the Homer was in Alaska. Is that what Nathan mm -hmm. was saying? So Homer, Alaska, that, that direction and being guided back to the States and through a thin thread of connection of phone number to phone number or text to text, linking into another world away in the Midwest, not the West, but the Midwest, and finding home there. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned earlier something about a new job. Do you want to mm -hmm. say anything about that? Yes. Yes, I do. Because one of the surprises was a Franciscan intentional community. Again, I didn't go looking for that. No. And part of the process for me in that seven, when ended up being seven months of a sabbatical redirection, reorientation, mm -hmm. say, um, was this Franciscan piece that, that showed up and how beautifully it is married with the contemplative mm -hmm. uh, way of being that I know. So in arriving, it was a simple matter of, of language, Franciscan language coming to me that I could say, oh, this is my way of being. And now I have language in the Franciscan pathway mm -hmm. or to express that way of being. And so one of the things that showed up was a position with the Franciscan Sisters of Little Falls. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Which was a delight, a delightful surprise mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, a, a year-long discerning of that. Uh, I came with the idea that I would, you know, have a, a spiritual direction practice and um, sort of be in community in that way. And it has just exploded in an expansive way that that community is is with the Franciscan Sisters of Little Falls. And I just completed day two. <laughs> and I, I consider that I have the most beautiful office 
Yes, you do. Probably <laughs> on campus, but certainly in the most beautiful office I have ever been gifted with in any of um, the things that I've done in my life. The kind of office where I just sit and stare at this beautiful painting mm -hmm. and be present um, for long periods of time. And not only could I, but then I'm actually invited to do that mm -hmm. as part of the work. Um, yeah, it's really, really beautiful and such a lovely marriage. I'll use that word again, marriage of presence. Richard Brewer has this expression of God, presence in God mm -hmm. through us. And it is that experience of what God can presence God in this environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other word that I love in Franciscan theology is hecheitas. Mm -hmm. I learned that, that. Yes, you in did. the <laughs> engaging Franciscan spirituality course that I was part of, got a part of right after arrival, which by the way, that course was so great because I was like, oh, what is this language? What have I said yes to? What <laughs> community have I entered in? <laughs> and this notion that we're all uniquely gifted mm -hmm. by God for work here on earth, for God, presencing God, you know, through us, manifesting mm -hmm. God through us in the world. I, I feel this mysterious mystical and special gift of that, that my gifts now are partnered so beautifully with the Franciscan sisters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And what might God be bringing into the world through us? That's right. We, we don't know, but we're open to helping manifest it, helping un it emerge, what wishes to emerge. I would say a word about the lovely office for any of our listeners who've been to Little Falls, Minnesota. If not, you're welcome to visit Welcoming House or the Mother House in Little Falls. That the office of what's now known as Franciscan Programs Ministry was designed to be a place of hospitality for people who come to visit to savor or taste or experience the Franciscan spirit which is so infused with beauty and presence and uh, uh, availability, hospitality. And so the spaciousness of your office is precisely hosting certainly your inner and relational work, but welcoming of people who come. So we put an invite out to this virtual Zoom land and podcast land that, um, Really come and visit and taste and see, and the beauty of the Franciscan spirit is uh, one of the portals or entryways is precisely by being welcomed by you now in your new office. So isn't that lovely? Yes. And yes, we do put out the invitation. Mm -hmm. Come and see, mm -hmm. taste and see how good, good God is yep. in this space. Mm -hmm. yep. So... Um, you referred to the engaging Franciscan spirituality, and I think you were part of the fourth cohort. Um, this one was a very specific uh, learning community because it was in the middle of COVID, and we had um, enough mm, technology capacity to be able to open it to our associates and sisters in other countries. And so we had uh, representatives from Central, North, and South America, as well as, um, you know, the little root of us here in Minnesota being part of that. One of the gifts that you brought into that cohort was this conversation between your spiritual range of experience, including a strong root in Presbyterian tradition and the, the Franciscan tradition. What do you find stays with you from that immersion experience? And so many things. Not only stay, but open up. Uh -huh. I have a, a friend who says, opening to the more, mm, so opening to the more, uh, I would say care of creation stays with me as part of that immersion experience. Mm -hmm. I came to St. Cloud with deep care and a high value for caring for creation. And so when, when I came, it, it was easy for me to align with 
our recycling practices, our reuse practices, our waste nothing practices. And it was contextualized in the care of creation mm-hmm. a little more, well, I guess I'd say clearly. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it wasn't that I wasn't clear before, but it was integrated into the the waters, if you will, yeah. of Franciscan way of life. Mm-hmm. And I've witnessed how deeply uh, sisters, especially um, here at the Welcome House and at the Mother House, care about creation, passionately care. And we were in prayer the other day. There was something, I think it was from the third order regular rule um, about admonish. If you see someone kind of going astray, that was, those are my words, mm-hmm. admonish them. And then, I, and when we first read that, I was like, mm, admonish them. And then it said, with compassion. Mm-hmm. So admonish them with compassion. And that's my other takeaway is the sense of compassion for other mm-hmm. and seeking to understand other rather than be understood. Mm-hmm. This way of being in the world, of being with people, but, but not just people, with all of creation. Mm-hmm. And it goes back to that sense I was talking about earlier of being with. Being with all of it from compassion, from love. My favorite a description of God in our prayer book right now is companioning presence. Yeah, that's beautiful. A companioning presence. And that was something that also was rooted in me more clearly uh, through that engaging Franciscan spirituality time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just the opportunity to be with others from around the world. Yeah, so rich. So rich. rich. So rich. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's um, wide ranging and broad in its implications for what it, how it shapes our lives. And if I could mirror back to you, one other area I heard uh, for you, and there were a couple other Presbyterians in our cohort, uh, is around Trinity. Do you want to speak to that at all? Yes. And and there were. Two others, and we would jokingly talk about. Well, we don't talk about Trinity in Presbytery Church. With which, interestingly enough, since that course, I have heard the word Trinity in church many, many times. <laughs> so, oh, my radar is now tuned uh-huh. to the sense of the the, the um, inclusiveness of God, or the expansiveness of God, the multidimensionality. Oh God, that that um, Trinity for me is oh God doesn't fit into our box. Yeah, God does not fit into humans' making of God. Mm-hmm. Um, we are, we are made in God's image, not the other way around. And oftentimes we personify God, and that was what got more fully broken open in that word Trinity. I remember the beautiful fountain was one of the images. Yeah. Uh, that was used in class that Rick introduced. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was Rick. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And this flowing of God in so many dimensions. Mm-hmm. And water has always been a special um, image, mm-hmm. and a deeply held image for me of the flowing of oh, God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just loved, 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 loved that image. Yes. You know, we, we could put in the show notes a uh, picture of Sheffield Fountains in yes. England. And this this sense, as you say, of the overflowing fountain fullness of God that mm-hmm. is part of this sense of abundance and generosity that goes right hand in hand with beauty and that hecheatas, the dignity of every dimension of creation, yes. including every person. So yes. there's a certain uh, respectfulness or reverence. And the other word is I've been listening to you is around communion. Mm-hmm. And finding our home in the larger communion of creation and God who in God's self is a communion, a relationship. God is relationship. So, yes. oh, this is yum, yum. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, it is. There's a, an expression in contemplative prayer of the wellspring mm. of love, the wellspring of God. Mm-hmm. And that is probably the primary image that I use when I'm leading contemplation. Because the wellspring is always available to us, 
always. We just sit by the wellspring, contemplate in the wellspring, be with the wellspring of love, always available. Yeah. In these times uh, where there's lots of talk of war and and food insecurity and polarization, there's something so heartening and strengthening about this being with um, the the wellspring, connecting ourselves with the source of life, with God, that strengthens us for this journey or guides us for our way of responding to what is. Mm-hmm. So I, again, I want to thank you for how your life witnesses that mm-hmm. and um, and the beauty with which, the grace with which you live it. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, we're thank heading towards the end here. One of my questions, is there any further Franciscan values or stories that you want to reflect on or you've already attended to that? Mm-hmm. I was just, as you were speaking, I was reflecting on this wellspring and, and how, um, it brings us when we meet God, God presence in God through us, it brings us naturally out of our ego cells, out of that places that want to judge and, um, and times when we come out of curiosity Mm -hmm. and into a more rigidity Mm -hmm. and so I, I guess that final thought is about living life from a place of curiosity. Mm-hmm. Find that to be very Franciscan. Yeah, yeah. And expanding beyond that, the the spiritual journey mm-hmm. to live from curiosity, to be listeners mm-hmm. seeking to understand another mm-hmm. is also very Franciscan rather than be understood. So companioning and being present, being with another. There is a um, a quote by Rainier Rilke that says, be patient toward all that is unresolved in your heart and live into the questions. And then there's more quote. And, and in the middle of that quote, it says, because the point is to live everything. We live the questions so that we live everything. And so... I find that to be so rich and so true in my life that as I I left to the wellspring, that it cultivates curiosity Mm -hmm. and the ability to be with another and hold space for another's essence, to see another in their essence. And I think it's such an important time right now for us to be practicing that and also developing the skill to practice that Mm -hmm. there are so many spiritual practices available to us practicing five minutes a day being quiet Mm -hmm. or going for a walk and feeling your body and your breath that help cultivate our ability to be present in god Mm -hmm. to know god's presence in us and I find it to be a rich and powerful time for us to be doing that. And it's one of the reasons I'm so grateful to be here mm-hmm. at the Welcoming House in this time, mm-hmm. not only in my life, but in, in history, this mm-hmm. period of history. Because we do that well together. Yeah. I did not say perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> I would have told you on that. <laughs> yeah, you would have too. Yeah, we do it messy well. Yes, yes. Yeah, doing our inner work of, of being present within ourselves uh, and presence in God through that work. Well, listening, curiosity. Those are the two. I can't say cornerstones. <laughs> yes, it's not four. Uh, two points. Mm-hmm. Anchor. An anchor my life. And as you're uh, kind of summarizing here, Jamie, it, it occurs to me that We've referred to the mother house and welcoming house that what are your children or like I was at my parents today. It's part of that interdependence. It's not just that. We speak in relationship to companions here at the house, uh, to associates in the community, to extended family or neighbors and friends. 
And that's all part of that same fabric that creates beauty, even though there's tension points and little holes that need darning from time to time. That's part of the <laughs> human experience. But in it, a beautiful tapestry is being woven under the guidance of the, the Holy Spirit or as we are uh, available to be the, God's presence and let God be present through us. So thank you. I want to thank you for being here with us on the podcast today, for sharing your walk with God, which has deepened through contemplative prayer and practice, and which has found also a deep home in Franciscan spirituality. Personally, I'm grateful for the gift of living in community and collaborating together with your new position. We'll be doing more of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, today specifically, I'm grateful for the rich stories and reflections you've shared that have given us a lot to ponder and consider going forward. So may God bless you on your continued journey. And once again, thank you. Mm, thank you. It has been so fun and good to do this together. Amen. Thanks for the invitation. Amen. Amen. You're welcome. Bye now. Bye. Thanks to you listeners for tuning into the podcast today. I'm looking forward to the next interview in this series on culture and Franciscan spirituality and invite you back for episode 50 when Franciscan associate Mariano Sique will speak to her journey from Nigeria to the United States as a child and her continued spiritual quest as a young adult. Until then, may you be blessed with peace and all good.